Hey, how are you guys? Um, so this is just going to be basically a little video for those of you who have lithium in the car or thinking about putting lithium in the car um, and need a battery monitor. There's not a whole lot of options out there. There are a few. Um, I'll put a couple of links down below of some of the options. Um, I'll also put a link to the item that we'll be installing today, which is the Renogy uh, battery monitor shunt. A friend of mine actually suggested it to me and it, uh, it sort of fits everything I need. It's relatively cheap for what it is. It gets a good idea of battery voltage, being that a conventional voltmeter that you'd use on your normal AGM batteries previously isn't gonna give you a true reading for the lithium state of charge. So you really wanna know what percentage of the battery's left, how, much, how many amps you're using, um, there's a heap of information on this little gauge that's really helpful. So the shunt that came with it's a 500 amp shunt, so it's massive, more than we'll ever need. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll jump into the install and uh, I'll go through some details with you now. Cheers. Just got a new delivery. Uh, we've got ourselves a new gauge to monitor the new lithium that we've got in the car. Um, at the moment, there's no real way to see state of charge or what's left in the battery. The volt gauge that we had with the old batteries, the deep cycles, is not really a good way to keep track of the state of charge or let us know how much power we're using or how much power's left. We did a bit of a search around and tried to find, you know, the best bang for buck for what we could use in the back of the car. The car does have an inverter. We don't really use it that much. It's there just in case. Um, but mainly the, the lithium batteries, just keeping the fridge cold um, and a couple of lights as well in the back and around the car. We did a bit of searching, like I said, and tried to find the best option. Um, there's a few out there, there's not a heap. Uh, there's the, from the, the sort of maybe the top three that I could see was the Enerdrive uh, E-Pro, I believe it's called. It's quite expensive, great little product, not that pretty to look at. Uh, there's also a Chinese version of that Enerdrive that looks very, very similar. Uh, does the same things, has a big shunt, 250 amp shunt, I believe. Um, and then there's the one that we decided to go with, which was the Renogy battery monitor. So this is the unit we're gonna go with. Little Renogy display screen. It's actually a 500 amp uh, shunt in there, which is pretty crazy. We, obviously we don't need a 500 amp shunt, but that will do us. Um, so I bought this off of the Renogy website. So there's a, an Australian uh, website with Australian stock, which is good. Um, you can see in the instructions here that the screen actually has a fair bit of information. So we've got battery, total amps and amps left. The percentage of the battery left, time remaining at that current power draw. How many watts is being drawn? Got a voltmeter and also the amount of amps that are being used at that time and then obviously it just calculates your time left based on that pretty simple to install um, so all the negatives going to the battery at the moment we'll take them off zero gauge cable going from the negative to one side of the shunt and then all the negatives that were on the battery now go to the other side of the shunt um, it's pretty easy little cable here six meter cable uh, with a simple plug that goes from the shunt. So here's the shunt. Um, so that little cable just plugs into here. Uh, you've got six meters. Uh, I'm going to mount this right next to the battery um, and run the cables down the back, down the side, and I'm going to mount the screen here. Hopefully there's enough room. It's going to be very tight edge to edge but it should be all right there. If I have to, I'm gonna mount it here because we're changing the rear setup soon anyway. Um, so it'll only be a fairly temporary mount until we figure it out, but hopefully I can try and fit it in like that. Fingers crossed, should be good. Um, on the back, 500 amp, uh, and obviously that little white plug that goes with the six meter cord to the shunt. Um, and then the only other cord that you need to install is this one goes onto the positive of the battery and plugs into the shunt in one of these two little holes here. So battery negative to shunt, all our negative drawers go on this side. So nothing can be on the battery side negative of the shunt. 
otherwise I won't read it. Everything, every single thing negative has to be on the shunt side. So the shunt in between all the loads. It's the most important thing, otherwise yeah, it's not gonna give you the right percentage. As far as setting it up, it says it's pretty simple from what I can see in the research I've done. Uh, you give the, once it's all installed and plugged in, um, we just give the battery a full state of charge, have it on full state of charge, and then pretty much just hold up after you've set the amount of amps that the battery is. So we've got a 120 amp hour battery. Uh, we put the 120 amp hours into here, and then we just hold up at full state of charge, and then it'll start working from there. Or you can fully drain the battery and hold down, uh, and it'll just start from there as well. So... As far as simplicity, I don't know, I've probably made it sound a lot harder than it needs to, but as far as simplicity, um, it doesn't get much e easier than that, really. Um, it does come with all the little screws and bits and pieces, pretty much everything we need to do the install. Alrighty, I'm going to start by removing this panel, and then we'll see if we can get the screen mounted in there. It's going to be close. going to set up some options on the unit um, so at the moment we need to get the battery to 100% state of charge uh, before we can sync the monitor and the shunt to the battery's full state of charge so it either needs to be totally full or totally empty um, I've just got it on the car at the moment so it's putting in 29.6 30 amps roughly so it shouldn't take too long to get it full I've had the fridge and everything turned off um, to set up all the options in here, we just need to hold the OK button. We go into our parameters, so we've got our battery capacity. Uh, from factory, this comes set at 100. I've just changed it to 120 to suit our uh, 120X iTech lithium battery. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. We've got a little arrow on here indicating what line we want to set up. Um, and if we want to edit any of the lines, um, we just push okay and then it'll start flashing 
Uh, so with the iTech battery, uh, full voltage, full charge is 14 volts. So we'll go down here, okay to the next one, three, four, and then we push the double arrows up here to get out of that line. Now, the low voltage or zero state of charge on this battery is 9.5 volts. Uh, that's zero. I need to confirm whether this unit really wants us to put in our lowest state of charge that we want. So that'd be 20%. On a lithium battery which uh, on this particular one means it's really 105 usable amp hours but I'm pretty sure it wants all the totals so I'll, I'll double check that and if it's something different I'll, I'll uh, write in the comments or in the description as far as I'm aware it needs to know that it's 120 amp hours full voltage is 14 volts uh, lowest voltage is zero volts uh, uh, sorry zero percent state of charge which is 9.5 volts um, if it wanted the lowest safe state of charge then that would be 20 percent of that 120 uh, I think which you know within reason it turns out roughly to 105 amp hours as quoted by iTech um, which means that voltage would be 12.5 from memory so Again, I'll correct myself if I need to in the comments, but I'm going to go with maximum full state of charge, 100% 14 volts and 0% state of charge, which is 9.5, which is the next one. 9.5, and then we'll go out of that line. And then lastly, we want the alarm on. So what I'm going to do with the alarm, I'm going to put the alarm on um, that 20% state of charge which is technically the lowest you really want it to go safely without damaging the battery or anything like that all right so we're all set so we've got 120 amp hour battery 100% state of charge 14 volts 0% state of charge 9.5 volts and we want the alarm to come on at 20% state of charge so that should be good uh, so now we can exit out of this this is not going to be correct yet because I still need to reset the shunt once the battery is at 100%, the DC charger in there is still putting in amps here. So once this number goes down to zero, I know the battery is 100%. And then all I do then, which is pretty straightforward again, is I hold the up arrow um, and that'll, I think it's for a couple of seconds, and that'll reset it and just start it from 100%. So it'll know that it's 100% from there. The other thing that it does give you the option to do is fully drain the battery and then hold the down button and then that resets it at zero and then you can charge it up from there and it'll keep track of it. So, we'll let that go for a while. We'll come back, we won't make you sit here and wait the whole time. A few moments later. Alrighty, we've reached 100%, so the amps have dropped off. Um, we bumped it up to 46 amps, I think it was putting in, um, through the Enerdrive DC charger. So what I've done, I've also confirmed with Renergy that the usable, the amp hour um, that we are going to set in here. Oops. So the capacity needs to be total usable amp hours. So the one, uh, the iTech 120X is a 120 amp hour battery, but obviously we can only use a percentage of that. We can't use the full battery, which is why lithium is good because you can use a greater percentage of the battery in comparison to a deep cycle battery, which is about 50%, and the lithium you can use up to 80%. So um, confirming with Renergy, it needs to be usable capacity which on the iTech is 105 amp hours. So I've set the capacity to 105 amp hours um, and the high voltage, 14 volts, low voltage, uh, with 0% state of charge is 9.5 volts uh, on my particular battery. And then the other thing that I've changed as well um, is the alarm, which is once I want the alarm to come on when I've got 20 amp hours left. Um, so that's something that I might change as well. We'll work that out when it happens. Um, so we'll let it run. The other thing I need to do now that we've reached 100% charge, uh, you can see that the energy drive hasn't quite switched on off yet. I've only just turned the car off. Um, I just need to hold up for three seconds. And then the energy screen and shunt are calibrated to that battery uh, and we're good to go. So pretty happy with how everything's turned out. 
we'll probably check back in a little while make another update video just to let you know if there's been any issues or if it's funny or if I don't think it's reading right uh, we'll be heading away this weekend to the Flinders Ranges so uh, it'll be a good thing to be able to sort of follow how it tracks uh, the fridge usage um, I might even try and do some inverter usage as well with the new battery which I haven't done yet um, and we can track how many amps we're pulling out and how much uh, how much power that uses as well Thank you.